Right, so welcome back guys. In today's video, it's time I give you guys a bit more detail and breakdown of how I was able to pass my 100k FTMO challenge. Now, for any of you that aren't familiar with my channel and coming across it for the first time, I've got as much experience as one can get in passing these prop firms as I've passed over 85 challenges now. Now, if you're interested in more details about that, I have um, posted the previous um, video, which you guys can check out and see more proofs and details of how, of how I was able to do that. Now, in terms of giving you guys some more tips and tricks, and also if you guys stick around to the end, I'll be breaking down my strategy of how I was able to pass um, all of these prop firms and the 100K in particular. Right, so the first thing I wanna discuss is what prop firms are the best to be taking these challenges on. Now, as we know, taking and passing these um, challenges and verifications is as hard as it is. So we wanna try and maximize our chances of passing these prop firms with as little friction as possible. So now the first and the most important thing to look for is what type of leverage they're offering you. Now the standard is one to 100, but there are also other prop firms which are offering one to 30 leverage. Now, I would always recommend to go for the higher leverage and this will make more sense as we go on to discuss risk management. So having a higher leverage is ideal for um, choosing the best prop firm. And the next thing then is daily drawdown and a max drawdown. Now again, it goes without saying, prop firms which are offering the most daily drawdown and the most maximum drawdown would be the best options, especially in this case with the strategy I'm gonna be discussing. So prop firms like F um, my Forex fund will definitely be a better choice in comparison to FTMO because not only are you reaching for an 8% target in comparison to 10% with FTMO, you also have a max drawdown of 12% in comparison to 10% by going with FTMO. Now obviously there are probably other um, prop firms other than my Forex fund which will give you the similar pr parameters but in my opinion MFF is the most reputable and I've also got with um, payouts from them so that's who I trust. Now moving on to the next subject, risk management is um, going to be the most key in taking these challenges. Now personally I would recommend everyone to be risking 2% on a My Forex Fund challenge because you have a max drawdown of 12%. That gives you 6 um, losses that you can take in a row before you um, blow your account. So now, obviously we're not gonna be trying to reach as deep into drawdown as they've let us, but having that buffer does um, help with psychology. Now, what I would say is, especially what I do with my trading to be able to pass the 100K FTMO and my Forex Fund Challenge, is I'll start off by risking 2%, and all you need is a nice one to two or a one to three risk to reward and having that twice for you to just pass your trade. So what you wanna look for is two good quality setups risking 2% to make 4%. Now, if you can achieve that in the first two trades being profitable, you've straight away passed the challenge. What I, what I see from a lot of other traders taking these challenges is just getting straight into it and taking um, poor quality setups just to, just, just to start that timer. But I would recommend once you do buy that challenge to stay um, true to your strategy and only take the A plus and the high probability setups. So when you do take those setups and they're a nice 4% winner, that's a good buffer created for you and for your psychology for you to then go on to pass the challenge. Now in, in the other case, you could risk 2% and lose that. So in that case, you want to consistently keep risking 2% until you reach a worst case drawdown of let's say of let's say 8%. So now you have 4% to play with before your challenge is blown. That's when you wanna drop down your risk to 1% and just focusing on getting a retry. So again, as traders, we can have losing streaks and we can also have winning streaks. So we wanna maximize off our winning streaks and when we are making or in a losing streak, we wanna make sure we're reserving our capital. So let's say you're in an 8% drawdown and nothing has been going in your favor with risking 2%, that's when you drop down your risk to 1%, so you have four more trades to then give you that room to build up that buffer back up to break even. Once you've reached break even, that's when you wanna wait for a retry, so all the days are reset and you can get a fresh 30 day retry. And then you wanna go again with your retry, risking 2% and hoping this time when you do take your high probability setups, they're hitting your one to twos and you just need two of them in a row for you to then pass your challenge. Now, in terms of the verification, it's 
more of the same thing. If anything, it will be a bit easier because you want to risk 2% and just hitting a 1 to 2 would bring you 1% away from the target. So if anything, you can pass the verification in one trade. Now, again, it sounds easier in theory than in practical. That's why you want to be sticking to a consistent risk management strategy and making sure your strategy is solid. Because I can reassure you guys, if you don't have a good solid strategy, it doesn't matter how much you're risking, you are going to lose the challenge at the end of the day. And that's why if you stick around to the end, I'll um, go into details of the strategy I use and you guys can start implementing some of the um, tips I give you there into your own strategies as well. Now the last advice I can give you before we jump onto the charts is once you've finally passed your challenge and your verification or your stage one and stage two and you're now on your very first live funded account this is the most important step. Now you want to drop your risk to 1%. You only want to be risking 1% of your entire capital. Now once you've taken a trade and you've made some profit, that's when you want to stop trading and wait for your first payout. And the reason I say that is because you still have not got your refund yet. So why are you going to risk losing your refund once you've reached this far? So I recommend once, you've, once you're in a bit of profit, whether that's 1% or 2% profit, just wait for your profit split date, take out, then take withdrawal, you will also get your refund and MFF also gives some bonuses on top of your refund. So you're making money at the end of the day. Once you've got your refund, that's when you're risk free. You, you're no longer risking your own capital. So now you can start risking 1% with the ease of psychology knowing worst case, even if you lose the account, well, there's nothing you're losing. There's, you've got everything to gain, but absolutely nothing to lose after that first payout and your refund from your challenge. So having said that, let's get on to the most interesting part, which is the strategy. And I'll give you guys a breakdown of um, how I take my trades and what are my A plus setup. Right, so coming onto the charts, I'm just going to be going over my A plus setups and I'm going to be showing you guys what exactly I'm looking for to start off my first trade strong on my um, challenges. Now, before we delve into the exact levels I'm looking at to take those high probability setups from, uh, you first need to um, identify your bias. Now, for me, if we're looking at current price action over here, you can see my bias will be bullish because although we broke these lows over here from this impulsive move down, we then saw a rejection and a retracement right back up, breaking back above these highs. So all this is telling me this high over here before this push down was no longer respected and we, we saw that level get violated. So this is showing me currently the bias is bullish once you've identified a bullish bias, you can then um, drop down to let's say your entry time frame over here. And now this is where the most important thing starts to come into play. Now with my A plus setups, I like to, I've seen a pattern where this level over here is the most strongest and the highest probability level to get a reaction from. And the reason is because once we see this impulsive move up, followed by a retracement and then a further impulsive move up breaking these highs. This level which created that impulsive move up is a very strong level which you can expect a reaction. And since we know from our higher time frame we're looking for buyers only, you can start looking on the 5 minute time frame for these sort of levels. Now you can see exactly once price did come back and retrace back into this level, you can see a nice reaction from it pushing right the way back up to these highs over here. Now you could take a nice entry here and ride this move up all the way to TP right over here. Now that this could be a quick scout for you. Again, we're focusing on high probability setups. So if you do have a tight stop just below these levels over here, that's a nice one to two, one to three R um, trade, exactly what we're looking for. So if I was to use my um, risk to reward tool and we say we're targeting the high of this, the body of this candle over here, like such and our tug and our stops are going to be just below these levels right over here this is a nice one to 2.78 risk to reward now if you get out our calculator and you're risking two percent on this trade times by 2.78 straight away you've made 5.5 percent on this trade so you're three percent away from passing um, stage one of your MFF, which is 8% target. Can you see how being patient and waiting for quality setups, like I've shared a tip with you right here, this is a huge gem, that these HP setups, which start from um, this lower high point, 
is a very strong level and you can expect a reaction off of these off of these levels over here you've already made 5.5 percent so now you can again do the same thing again going back to your higher time frame on a different day on a different pair and looking for these um higher low levels over here so to give you another example um, let's use the replay tool and just get rid of this price action which happened there so currently if we're looking at price action again on the same pair these examples are everywhere so i don't even need to really search for it you can see again like i discussed previously with you guys that this impulsive move over here began from this point pushing price down breaking these lows so currently again basic structure we formed a lower high point coming off from here and so we're looking for sales only again like i said drop down to your five minute and since our bias is sales only you can then look for um, places to take your trade off right so over here you can see that price created a lower high point before pushing down and these lows have been respected so if we just use the highest low, although you can see a break below over here, again, this is a fake out in my opinion in accordance to my strategy. And so I'll still consider this level to be the strongest lower high point. Again, so you want to highlight this level over here and just wait for price to come back into this level. Again, price did come very close to this level and saw a reaction. Although this wasn't the cleanest, you can then wait for another reaction to take place. And as you can see over here, again, you see price coming to this level, waited for weakness, and then you can take sales from this level, from this level over here because it's a high probability setup. Again, that's all we're looking for to pass these challenges. And you can have stops just above these highs over here, and then you can be targeting, let's say, the bottom of the body of this candle, which is another nice. 1 to 2.45 risk to reward again risking 2% you're making enough to pass your challenges in two trades alone so it's very important to be able to have a solid strategy like I've shared here with you I've just told you a very strong level you guys can be taking your buyers or sells off in accordance to your higher time frame bias risking 2% staying consistent and true to that risk management and then eventually you will pass your challenge over here. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like, comment any other suggestions you may have, and be sure to follow all the links in my description below. I do hope to see a lot of you guys sending me your um, screenshots of you passing all of your FTMO challenges using this technique over here um, in combination with your own strategy, of course. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.